Hi guys, Brett Clarkie here from Cat Scratch. Today I'm down here with Natalie Lowe at Total Fitness in Wilmslow. Um, specifically, what we're going to look at today is the MyTPI training. Yeah. Um, for anyone that's unaware, Natalie is a ex LET access member. Yeah. She's a qualified personal trainer, a strength and fitness conditioning coach. Yeah. Um, anything else to add? My TPI expert. My TPI expert, the one we and actually love. Somewhat a relatively okay golfer. Yet to be determined, I've never seen a play. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we're going to look at today the My TPI, uh, like the screening, is it called? Screening process. So, it um, kind of identifies where people will be, rotation, yeah. strength, and things like that. Um, and then later on, we're going to go and have a look at some of the actual exercises that yeah. I'm doing that are focusing on these areas. Yeah. Yeah? Let's get into it. Well, the first thing that I always look at with all my golfers is their natural golf posture. And it's important to find this out initially because you want to get the framework and the groundwork right before yep. we start moving you between the that. Yep. So there are three different types of posture that you tend to get with most golfers. What we're looking for is a neutral position basically. Yep. So if we look at Brett from the side, he's quite a tall guy. And um, if you take the come away and go hands across your chest. I'll take it from him, probably easier. <laughs> so, would you say that's your natural setup? Yeah, close. Okay. So what we're looking at is spinal angle and the amount of hip hinge you've got. Yeah. So neutral posture would be spine tail flat. Yeah. Everyone's spine has a natural S curve to it anyway, that's how we know. Yeah. But what we're looking for is any deviation at the top or at the bottom too much either way. Yeah. So a C posture would be a massive curve there, if you curve the spine crap, and that's it. So you can see with this posture, which is quite common for a lot of people, it really restricts the amount of rotation that you can have. As soon as the thoracic here, which is the middle portion of the portion of the back, becomes compressed or flexed, yeah. it limits the amount of rotation. So as a golfer, this is not the ideal position to be in because it limits the back swing yeah. and it's likely to then cut the follow through out position as well. The big thing I notice is when I am tight there, I have to move my hips and yeah. legs. So what you tend to find is you'll always get an overcompensation. Yeah. So if you start in a C posture, what you'll find is the hips don't move as naturally as they should. So you'll probably get a sway to the right, yeah. or you'll then get a lift and a tilt backwards, yeah. which isn't great for the spine from a mechanical point of view. Yeah. Okay. We're then looking at what's called an S shape posture. So if you tilt the hips, Brett, that's it. Also, really common posture. Again, it restricts rotation through the back swing, but this time more from the lumbar spine, which is the bottom part there. Yep. And this is the bit that, as a human, isn't designed to rotate massively. The vertebrae become a lot smaller and a lot more fixed. Yep. What you tend to find here with people is this is where you do get a big swing. It's right handed golf coming to the right, or left handed golf coming to the left. Yep. Again, massive overcompensation. Is to lose spinal angle at the top yeah. and tilt back. Go back into your natural setup. So, if we look at your posture, what we're looking for is can be picky, you've got a slight seat, yeah, okay. very, very slight, but again, you're quite a tall guy and there's a little bit that you've got quite enough knee flexion here. Yeah. yeah, so that's something that, like we said, we wanted to work on. Yeah. If you go back into your posture again. So for Brett, quite tall, in order for him to reach the club and set up naturally, he'd have to lean slightly more from the top of the spine here, if he doesn't have enough hip hinge. So with your hip hinge, what you're looking for is that you can easily sit over the hips and sit into that natural posture there. Without a hip hinge, the only way to overcompensate is to slow it to reach. To reach. So what you're looking for is a nice in-between and one way to simply check for yourself is to come into your posture, excessively curve, and find neutral, excessively arch, and find neutral in the middle way. That should hopefully be a nice straight spine. Okay, so go to the extremes and then work back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Again, use a mirror to test yourself. So if you've got a mirror to the side of you here, you want to be just looking at my straight, my slumped, and my arch. And is this a strength problem or is it just a lifestyle problem? Um, it can be both. Okay. More common than not, it's a lifestyle issue. So for people that are working at desk, like myself, spend yeah. a lot of time, we end up in this kind of posture. Yeah. And when we come and train at the gym, we don't necessarily do any strength work for the posterior. So we don't work behind the scap and the back of the shoulders yeah. and down the spine. To try and, to try and 
try and retract these muscles and pull them back. On the opposite side of things, it really compresses the chest and promotes some tightness across the front of the shoulder and the yeah. chest. Um, so it tends to be more of a lifestyle factor. Again, it simply can just be a teaching element in the sense that you're just unaware that you're doing it. Yeah. So by being more aware of your natural posture, you'll then remember to get yourself in the correct position yeah. before you start, yeah. which will naturally just become habit over time. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. Next one. Okay, so we're going to look at pelvic rotations next. Right. So if you come into your natural posture again, cross your arms over your chest, all you need to do this time is you're going to move the lower body and keep your body really quiet. So we're looking at the separation between Yeah, the two. separation of upper and lower. So with this test, I've got Brett to tuck his shirt in because it's important for me. I want to try and see his hip line. I want to look at how his hips move naturally. Have you trained to spot certain things? Or I say trained, but like, yeah. do you notice certain Yeah, things? with practice, you start to notice yeah. more and more things. So if we're looking at your movement here, the upper body is staying relatively quiet for me. The left hip looks like it moves slightly more than the right, and then moving towards your right looks a little bit more of a struggle. Yep. It's certainly better than when we did this the first time. Sure, sure. So one way to sort of check, are we looking for a mobility or a stability issue? If I come behind you and I say, right, I'm going to grab your shoulders and put some pressure in there, and turn, do you feel like it makes it easier? Uh, yeah. Okay. Not by much, though. Not by a lot, but what that does is for me is as I compress your shoulders, I provide your body with a little bit of stability. Yeah. Hopefully that should then allow you to utilise the mobility you've got a little bit better. Okay. So as a trainer, what that would tell me is that we need to strengthen you in order to get the most mobility from your body. Yeah. So in a golf swing, when you're, whenever you're in a bent over position, you start to work against gravity more, which puts a lot more stress on the body. It makes it harder for you to get yeah. so in the position that you want to. Yeah. So as soon as I then hold you, it gives you that flexibility to yeah. move a lot easier. And what's most common that people tend to like move? Yeah, the, the most common sort of movements with this are kind of, if I jump in for a sec, what you tend to find is people hardly move, okay. so it's like this, or then you get everything moves. Or um, again, really common one is sway. You get a bit of this, but it's yeah. a bit of slide. So, and that's what you find common in golf swing as well. Is it a strength thing, or do, do you think people don't have the perception of the separation? Yeah, again, this is where you kind of got to be quite clever and ask a few questions. Yeah. So, for yourself, you can see that the hips do move. Yeah. You've definitely got more movement going left than you do going right. Yeah. So, you understand what I'm asking you to do. As soon as I give you some stability, it makes it easier. Yeah. So, it's a question of understanding versus actual physical ability. If I say to you, nothing, I just ask you to move and you don't move very well, yeah. but then I keep asking you to keep going and direct you and you get better, then you do have a little bit of movement there. Yeah. Maybe you just need to be taught better in terms of how to use it. Yeah, it's right. So if I came into this position and I was like, right, Brett, go again, and you say, actually, this makes hardly any difference, it feels the same, yeah. maybe that's not necessarily then a strength issue. Yeah. Although you could never go wrong with getting strong in that position. I know when we well. first did this, when you held my shoulders, it helped a lot. Yeah. Because like, I was fighting as I was like, yeah, yeah. when you stopped it moving, it was a lot of easier. Sure, yeah. You can yeah. see definitely within that already how the movements are getting a lot better. Yeah. And that's when then maybe if I wasn't sure, I would take you to and look at the hip test and the torso test yeah. separately. Seated trunk versus standing hip test. Yeah. And have a look at those movements in isolation. Yeah, so it's if then it has mobility within those movements, it might be more of a strength issue in the sense that you can't maintain it in golf posture, and yeah. that's not going to work strength dominant okay. versus mobility alone. Okay. okay, next one. Cool, so next test we're going to go opposite movement, yeah. so also rotation test. Uh, are we best? Yes, please. Yeah. Golf yeah. posture, so again, what we're looking at is separation, but this time we're looking at upper body versus lower body separation. I remember when I first came for this test, what I loved was everything was focused specifically around golf. Yeah. Obviously, my TPIs and everything's in posture, not everything, but most tests are in posture. Exactly, you swing in posture, yeah. so majority of the time we need to know what you can do in this position. Yeah. Okay, this time lower body really quiet, upper body rotates. Let's have a look. I can't believe that's a golf ball like that at first. <laughs> I know, you're right handed. Yeah. <laughs> Good, keep that moving. Okay, this time again, if I come in, grab the hips. Tell me, easier? Yeah. What are you saying? Easier. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, good. So same with the previous test, what we're doing is providing you some stability from the lower body. Yeah. Allows you to then rotate a little bit more naturally yeah. from the upper body. And are you are you paying attention to stamina almost as well? Like after two, am I getting really tired? Um, or are you not so maybe good? a little bit, but more quality of movement yeah. than this. So if you were flying through it, but you were like this all yeah. over the place, then that's also not great movement, yeah. even though you could do loads of it. Yeah. What I'm looking for is quality of movement, the yeah. amount of turn, the amount of stability from the lower body. Is it natural? Does it look forced? Yes, I can remember. It's, good. it's definitely better. Yeah, I was going to say, I can remember. The first time There's still a little bit of what sort of wants to be a bit of a hip lift yeah. this way. But you have to remember when you swing, you take your hips with you. Yeah, so it's yeah. unnatural to want to keep yourself. Yeah. But what is a huge factor in this is your lower body strength. So the strength from the glutes and the hamstrings in order to hold you in this position. But as we spoke about during the first test when we looked at your natural posture, being able to hinge at the hips and keep yourself sat here quite comfortably then allows that rotation to happen as naturally as possible. Yeah. Whereas if I struggle to get in that position. Yeah. Right, next one. Oh, okay, done. next test, we're going to look at 90-90 test. Okay. Really good test for golfers. We're looking at shoulder mobility with yeah. this test. So, first place, I need you to just stand facing forwards. Yeah. You're going to go 90 degree angle from forearm onto the upper arm into the shoulder. Just yeah. right hand side to start with. Elbow level of the shoulder and it's rotate as far back as you can. Good, again. Nice. So what we're looking for is can your elbow reach the spinal angle, which it comfortably does in standing. So then we go exactly the same, just on your left hand side. side. Perhaps you just slightly, slightly like this. It's good. So we'll have a look at the left hand side. Shoulder. Do you feel any difference? I feel quite, yeah, quite natural. It does, yeah. It feels looser to the right like this. Yeah. It doesn't feel as hard to rotate. Very good. And then what we want to do with this test now is check your golf posture. Okay. So if you come into your golf posture, you go to your right arm again. Uh, yeah, so you're going to go exactly the same position. You might need to turn around. So golf posture, I'm going to check your right arm, elbow level, and you're going to rotate back as naturally as you can this time. So what we're looking for is, is this angle level of the spine, which it pretty much is, that's pretty good, that's a lot better than it was. Okay. I remember I could do it standing up five. Yeah, posture and that's really common with a lot of golfers, as soon as you come into that golf posture, gravity works against you, yeah. it's much harder to try and get the joint back, that's yeah. where you need that strength through the shoulder joint. To try and get it back. Yeah, again. exactly. That's good, it's a lot better. Let's have a look on the left. The good thing is, well, you're isolating either side, so it's, yeah. you're not just doing it. Well, if you think as a golfer, you, you've got to use both those 90 degree angles. Yeah. So as a right handed golfer, you're looking in the backswing, you're looking yeah. for the set position. And then think on the follow through, when you're coming through, you're still going to create that 90 degree angle. Yeah. Even when you come through here, it's important to be able to get that mobility through both yeah. shoulder joints. A little bit stiffer, try and keep the hands firm if you can. It's a little bit harder, and if I'm being picky, I'd say you may be just short though. You always want a better hand when you try and get a curve back. <laughs> it's definitely better, that's the main thing. Yeah. Um, and as a right handed golfer, I never like to sort of bias one side to the other, yeah. but I would prefer you to be better on your right than yeah, where you are. But one thing that all golfers should try and improve if you come into this position, your posture position again, yeah. is just to explain really quickly. So the position of your scapula here or your shoulder blades has a massive impact on the actual position of your shoulder joints. Okay. If you pinch these together like you're trying to push an apple, you can feel how this pulls all your shoulder joints back. Yeah. If you do the opposite, let it totally relax, it collapses in. That then brings you into a little bit more of that C posture, yeah. which is going to restrict the rotation in the side. Yeah. But it also makes the shoulder joint much more difficult to get back itself. Yeah, I'm trying it's very restrictive yeah. in that position. So as a golfer, you always want to be strengthening the 
the muscles that sit down the back. So your lower traps, your mid traps, lats, delts, rotator cuffs, a little bit of the upper traps here as well. That keeps your scapular in nice and tight, which allows a natural fluid movement of each shoulder joint. Yeah, so you have to trap as well. Yep. Okay. So to the two points. So if I was natural, I'd get everything. So it folds nicely, you don't even know that you do. Whereas if I was a bit more yeah, a little bit hunched. Like, there's only so far that you know, yeah. and then it has to start to come into a lift. Because yeah. the bottom line as a golfer, you have to get the club here somehow, yeah. and your body will always take the path of least resistance. Yeah. It will always do what's easier for it. So if you can't fold here and turn naturally, it's just going to go up, oh, and no, then can't go any further. Yeah. Make, like make it work. Make it work yeah. somehow. You've got to hit the ball. Yeah, here, yeah. Yeah. So we're talking margins, but it's about getting that consistency yeah. to the point where each swing becomes a lot easier, it's a lot less effort, you strike it more consistent because things are where they meant to be. Yeah. Okay. Good. Next test, uh, glute bridge test. Okay. Uh, right on the floor for me. One of my favourite tests. Catches a lot of people out. Not my favourite. Not your favourite test. So start position, knees together, feet together, slightly bent. Hands above the chest, and you're going to bridge up as high as you can. When you set in what you think is stable, you're going to extend one leg. You're going to have you hold for 10 seconds here. So, as a trainer, what I'm looking for is tension through the hamstring so you can feel these are quite tight, yeah. which tends to tell you that there's a little bit of overcompensation because the glutes aren't quite lifted enough. Yeah. A little bit shaky, yeah. hard to hold. Relax, come down, change legs, exactly the same thing. On the positive side, you can hold easily for 10 seconds. What we're also looking for is that the hips don't drop one side to the other, that they remain up as high as possible. And again, if we're testing hamstrings, this one's a little bit better, it's a little bit softer. Yeah. Just on first glance, it tells you maybe right glutes a little bit stronger. Okay. But again, on the positive side, you can keep your height up there, you maintain it. There's yeah. no cramping from the hamstrings, so you don't have to lie down. Massively important test as a golfer, glutes one of your most important muscles to provide stability. That then allows you to get that speed and strength throughout your swing. Yeah, which if is, you don't have stability. The glutes is something we identified quite early that is a weakness of mine, yeah. um, which would suggest why the hamstrings attract you more. Yeah, what you tend to find, not just in golf, but in everyday life as well, when the glutes under fire and they don't perform as they should, something else has to pick up the pace yeah. and has to overcompensate from the hamstrings more yeah. often than not. And a lot from yeah. So, in a golf posture, if you don't have the strength here to hold this angle, you get a lot of sweat, yeah. really common, and you get a lot of early extension. So, this, yeah. not being able to keep your bum back, that's just no good if it's ready. Yeah, it's which is a really distance. common thing in a lot of people swing yeah. and trying to get out of it. Exactly, and that's how I've swung most of my life. That's yeah. I became a trainer. Yeah. started getting some blues. <laughs> but really common throughout women because women have less muscle mass, they're not quite as strong as most yeah. men, so you tend to see that quite a lot. From a golf perspective, you've probably got the most important muscles to try and train, and you just can't be wrong with getting used to strong as possible. Yeah. Okay. Right, so we've we'll got some of the tests. Yeah. Uh, let's go and have a look at some of the exercises specifically focusing on what we've just discussed. Yeah. The first exercise we went to was a half kneeling press. So the reason I chose this exercise for you to start with initially was because this is a great exercise to try and develop some lower trap strength some uh, mid-back strength and I like the half kneeling position because it encourages you to fix the lower body while only isolating one joint so what we're looking for here is that half kneeling position or one knee down then what we're going to do is you're going to tuck the elbow in tight as you start to lower the bar and then you're going to drive up strong feeling like you're pushing from behind the shoulder blade and that then starts to work lower traps a little bit of the lats while keeping the rest of the body really still as a golfer, it's important to try and separate limbs, keep parts still while the others are moving, so it's a great exercise to try and replicate that movement. Next exercise that I chose for you was the banded duck walks. So this exercise is a great exercise to try and develop glutes, especially your glute need. So as a golfer, we move laterally, so side to side, and those muscles are responsible for holding the pelvis still. So they provide some stability through your natural golf posture, allowing you to then turn one way into your backswing and then start to develop into your downswing while maintaining the position that you are on the floor. So what we're looking for with this exercise is that the band either starts around the knees, which makes it slightly easier, 
or we go to the ankles, which we've selected for you to make it a little bit harder. You try and maintain golf posture throughout and you're trying to keep the length of the band relatively similar with every step that you take so that keeps the same amount of tension on there. As a thought for you, what you're looking for is to lead the exercise with that lead foot and the trail leg starts to resist the tension on the way in. That gets both glutes firing with every step that you take. So that's kind of a, a quick introduction to the MyTPI. Yeah, so quick snapshot there, a couple of the tests that we would use with all golfers that come in and then a couple of basic exercises, some beginner exercises that we can throw in there for guys to get started with to counteract some of those problems that we yeah. might have seen. So we looked at kind of, obviously the few that I've drawn, yeah. few exercises that are like the most common things that we've looked at. Yeah. Um, if you haven't seen already, Natalie's uh, with ProFit Golf Conditioning, all the links are in the description down below, Instagram yeah. and Twitter. Yeah, give yeah. us a follow. Exactly. And if you haven't seen a, uh, the giveaway that I did at Christmas, I've still got a couple more weeks left to run. Yeah, make included, sure you enter, that'll yeah. get you screening. That concluded a screening with that lead out at Wilmslow. So make sure you get entered into that. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah. Oh. As if we said that both at the same time. I know. <laughs> Is that a little bit crazy? Okay, you'll say that. Yeah. Right, okay, okay, right. Yeah, you can come in, though. You look good in. Yeah, go on. Yeah. I'm just going to stand there and look. Oh, yeah, it'll only be a really quick one. I wish we'd get your intro.